The Battle of Verdun, a name not familiar to the average citizen today, nevertheless had a profound impact on the course of history. The battle lasted from February 21st to December 18th, 1916, making it one of the bloodiest and longest battles of World War I. When it was over, 700,000 men's lives were forever altered by life-changing wounds, both physical and mental, while 300,000 other men became mere footnotes of history, remembered only by small wooden crosses that dotted the countryside. The author of this destructive battle was the German general Erich von Falkheim. He believed that attacking Verdun, a strategic ring of 19 forts connected by a series of interlocking trenches, which protected the very road to Paris, would compel the French to throw every man they have to defend this critical bastion of France. He hoped such a battle of attrition, using heavy barrages of artillery, would bleed France out in its very will to fight. Little did Falkenhayn know how prescient his vision would prove to be. Within days, the French forces were in disarray, so much so that the French commander, General Joffrey, victor of the Battle of the Marne, a battle which saved Paris in the opening weeks of the war, was dismissed by French command and replaced by General Patton. Then came the blow that should have been fatal to the French cause, the fall of the strategic fort Douaumont. Now, Douaumont was the largest and the highest and the most critical of all the forts at Verdun a fall that came both providentially and farcically, by blunder and by bravery. First, the blunder. During the opening days of the German attack on Verdun, French General Herr, convinced all was lost, had ordered the forts of Verdun to be destroyed through demolition, including Douaumont. But as the Germans' advance stalled, the French were told to reoccupy the forts. Confusion reigned, especially at Dumont. As two replacement brigades advanced, neither one occupied the fort, convinced it was already occupied by French soldiers. And so, each brigade settled in on either side of the fort. Now, the bravery. 24-year-old Sergeant Kuntz, assigned to clear a path for advancing German soldiers by cutting through barbed wire and other barriers that might hinder the German advance on Fort Dumont led a small group of 10 men towards the fort. A deadly enough mission on its own, Kuntz and his men had to advance under the fire of their very own artillery, meant to weaken French resistance. As Kuntz proceeded, he was shocked the enemy did not fire on a small band of approaching men. Later, French soldiers from the nearby town claimed they saw soldiers advancing, but in the swirling snow were convinced it was simply a returning French patrol. Whatever the case, Kuntz and his men were able to reach the dry moat that surrounded the fort. Forming a human pyramid, the sergeant scaled the side and entered through a gun port in the fortress wall. He then found a door and bid his men to follow him into the fort. All but two of Kuntz's men, terrified that it was a trap, refused to go any further. Even these two men did not advance far as Kuntz ordered them to guard one hallway as he continued down another. Soon, he could hear the fire of weaponry, with pistol in hand, the plucky sergeant advanced along the darkened hallway towards a door that concealed the growing sound of gunfire. Then, bursting through the door, he ordered the stunned Frenchmen operating a 155 millimeter gun to raise their hands and surrender. Alone, Kuntz had captured four soldiers and silenced the key weapon defending Fort Dumont. However, Kuntz did not hold the men for long, as they dashed from his sight at the first opportune instant. This momentary setback was immediately erased when Kuhn stumbled upon a room of about 20 Frenchmen. Before the soldiers could respond, he turned them into captives by slamming the door shut and locking them in. Shortly afterwards, finding a table spread with French food, the famished Kuntz shifted his zeal from fighting the Frenchmen to satisfying his hunger. Eventually, other German soldiers entered the fort and the conquering heroes capture of Fort Dumont the cornerstone of the whole French fortification system was overshadowed by the arrival of these newer German units who took credit for his exploits. Regardless, the fort was now in German hands and the French line was breached. Only the weather, timely reinforcements, and Falkenhayn's desire to fight a war of attrition instead of gaining immediate victory prevented the Germans from taking advantage of the shocking conquest of France's most strategic fort at Verdun. Sadly, for the French, what had taken essentially one German soldier to accomplish, 
the capture of Fort Dumont would eventually take over 100,000 French lives to undo and restore to French hands. Falkenhayn's dream of breaking the French will through attrition was only beginning. In the next nine months, over 60 million shells would fall on Verdun, leaving man and earth permanently scarred. As one historian remarked, the battlefield became an open cemetery in which every square foot contained some decomposed piece of flesh. During these grueling months, General Patton became the hero of Verdun, boldly proclaiming, they shall not pass. And with fresh men and supplies, he upheld his bravado, preventing a German victory. However, his stand came at a great cost. As future Prime Minister Winston Churchill remarked, Redun was the anvil upon which French manhood was hammered to death. Today, it is estimated that 40 tons of shells are still buried under Verdun. But something else was buried under Verdun's battlefield, the French will to fight. The very heart of Falkenhayn's plan to break the French spirit had worked, even more so than he could have ever imagined. For as the Battle of Verdun went on month after brutal month, and shell-shocked Frenchmen were daily forced to charge into deadly machine gun fire and artillery barrages, they revolted. The pivotal moment came as French soldiers were ordered to go over the top and leave their trenches to attack the Germans. The men refused to budge. Instead, came the curious sound of sheep-like bawling emanating from the French soldiers. The privates and corporals who comprised most of the French army determined there would be no more going as lambs to the slaughter. Soon, over half the French army was in open mutiny. With heroic effort, Patton quieted the mutiny by providing the men with leave from the battlefield, proper latrines, edible food, and in many instances, personal encouragement. But the men were not the only ones breaking. Patton himself was infected with the pessimism and the horror and despair of Verdun. As the British general Sir Douglas Haig observed, Patton had a terrible look. He had the appearance of a commander in a funk, and he had lost his nerve. The French sheep of Verdun and their commander never regained their fighting spirit. It is why 20 years later, during the Battle of France, in a fight for national survival against Hitler's invading armies, the French, who had fought valiantly for four long years against the Germans in World War I, folded within a mere six weeks before the advancing blitzkrieg of Nazi forces. It is also why Patton, the hero of Verdun, took the traitorous route of working with Adolf Hitler and establishing the compliant Vichy government, which willingly did Hitler's bidding. He could not bear to see slaughter again, such as he had witnessed at Verdun. It is reality of life that sometimes our past hinders us from moving forward in the present and in the future. It is critical to note that although Patton may have saved lives in the short run by acquiescing to Hitler, World War II inevitably killed over 55 million souls, many dying in horrific death camps across Europe. Might a more resilient Patton and France have prevented much of this carnage had the rope of Verdun not hung tight around their consciousness? Each person must determine whether the pain or failure of the past will be allowed to limit what they do in the present or the future. As Philippians 3.12 says, at some point we must forget those things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are ahead. It is critical that you not let the Verduns of your past prevent you from fighting the battles of the present or even the future. If one person like Sergeant Kuntz could single-handedly capture a fort, what might you accomplish if unhindered by your past? Today is the day to advance. We hope you enjoyed this hidden tale of a history maker. If you did, please click here to subscribe. And you will probably like our video that examines a Chinese dissident's miraculous escape from the terror of Chinese communism.